Thank you, Hannah and uh, Ulf. So thank you for all, you all for being here. It's a little bit hard to find a room, I think, but uh, now we are here. Um, the reason why I'm um, presenting this work is uh, that we've been in the Diabetes and Nutrition Study Group. We are preparing some dietary guidelines, and in that, uh, as part of that work, um, I've been responsible <coughs> or in charge of the carbohydrate recommendations. Um, and as part of that work and similar work that I've been uh, involved in in the Norwegian National Recommendations for Diabetes, we did a systematic review and meta-analysis um, on the subject of carbohydrate, low carbohydrate diets in, uh, in diabetes, um, which was published one year ago in uh, Diabetes uh, and uh, Obesity and Metabolism, and which will be the first part of my talk today. But first, why is this uh, an important uh, to address? Uh, a lot of discussion, both in the lay press and the scientific literature, uh, the last 20 years or so, about there's been a lot of, of talk about this, um, how suitable low-carb diets is in the management of type 2 diabetes. And during this time, several studies and systematic reviews have been conducted. Only during the past uh, uh, two years, there's been four systematic reviews and meta-analysis uh, on the uh, use of low-carb diets in type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> and, uh, sorry, I think I went a little bit faster. Um, and back in 2004, when uh, the Diabetes and Nutrition Study Group uh, published uh, their last uh, dietary recommendations, uh, we concluded then that there is no justification for the recommendation of very low carbohydrate diets in uh, persons with diabetes. Uh, at that time, there was no long-term evidence or benefit of these diets. And the group thought that um, they, these diets were too <coughs> high, usually too high in uh, fat and could uh, possibly raise levels of total and LDL cholesterol. Uh, the ADA have changed the attitude towards low-carb diets gradually. In 2007, they advised against these diets, and in the latest updated standard of care this year, the low-carb diets were endorsed as a diet option in diabetes. Uh, they write then that the research indicate that low-carbohydrate eating plans may result in an improved glycemia and have the potential to reduce anti-hyperglycemic medications for individuals with type 2 diabetes. Although they add that there is a challenge with long-term compliance to the diets and uh, that these diets are not suitable for all patient groups. Um, they go on by saying that the variety of eating plans, including low carbohydrate uh, meal plans, can be used to achieve weight loss. However, no single approach has been proven to be consistently superior. So what does the evidence say? Is low carb diets the best choice in the management of type 2 diabetes? To address this question, uh, we performed a systematic review and meta-analysis in uh, the Diabetes and Nutrition Study Group. And we used the GRADE mythology and put in a PICO question format of the GRADE mythology. The population of interest was adults with type 2 diabetes. We defined the low carb diets as containing 40% of energy from carbohydrate or lover, and compared with diets with a carbohydrate content above 40. We knew we wouldn't be able to find uh, randomized control trials. Uh, assessing the more critical outcomes like cardiovascular uh, morbidity and mortality. So we would have to make do with the less critical but important outcomes like HbA1c, body weight, body lipid, blood lipids and blood pressure, and of course uh, compliance to dietary intervention. The systematic review was conducted in accordance to the Cochrane Handbook of Systematic Reviews, um, and uh, it was uh, also in accordance with the PRISMA statement. And it was re registered on PROSPEROS, which is a sort of clinicaltrial.com for systematic reviews. And all <coughs> relevant databases were searched. And as I said, we used the GRADE approach to assess the strength of evidence to be able to make uh, dietary uh, recommendations. 
we did two literature research, the first one in November 2013, and then updated our search in 2016. Nearly 1,600 um, records were screened from this search, and we ended up with 23 articles that fulfill the inclusion criteria. 19 of these are included in our meta-analysis meta analysis, since the four studies with crossover design could not be included. <clears throat> so um, the total number of participants were 2,178. The interventions lasted from three months and up to two years, and one study had a mean follow-up of three years. Differences in carbohydrate intake was statistically significant between the low-carb diets and comparator in all the trials, and the carbohydrate content in the low-carb diet varied from 5 to 40% of energy, while in the comparators, uh, comparator diet it varied between 42 to 65. Fifteen studies emphasized that weight reduction was a goal of the dietary intervention, but only six of the low-carbohydrate diets were energy-reduced, and 10 of the comparator diets. Studies were published between 1994 and 2014, and were for the main part conducted in North America, Australia, and New Zealand and Western Europe. So to the results, our outcomes is presented as weight mean differences in change, between the carbohydrate-restricted uh, carbohydrate diets and the higher carbohydrate diets. We also perform subgroup analysis based on the degree of carbohydrate reduction and study dur duration. There is a slightly greater reduction in HbA1c in the low-carb diets of 0.09, uh, corresponding to 0.1 millimole per mole. The for this first plot shows the short-term studies of three to six months duration in the upper panel and the more long-term studies of 12 months or more in the lower panel. And as you can see, uh, the main uh, you, the difference was driven by trials of short-term du duration where there was a significant uh, reduction. While in the long-term trials, there's hardly any effect, <coughs> or any uh, difference in the effect. Uh, must add that all uh, diets had uh, a positive effect on HbA1c, but there was no difference in effect uh, in the long-term trials, at least. There was no difference in weight, weight change, blood pressure, or total LDL and HDL cholesterol apparent in either the relatively short or long-term trials. The fig this figure shows the result for body weight reduction. And this shows uh, changes in uh, blood pressure. And here you have the um, uh, blood lipids. And as you can see, the only consistent difference between the studies with higher and lower carbohydrate intakes was a small difference of 0.13 millimoles per liter in triglyceride levels. <clears throat> no detectable difference in attrition was observed. We also attempted to assess compliance with uh, prescribed diets, um, because when you're making dietary recommendations, it's very important that uh, it is a diet that you really follow the uh, diet that is prescribed. And, uh, while there appeared to be a relatively high level of compliance with the moderately low carbohydrate diets, it was evident that the ability to follow the diet with very low um, carbohydrate content was generally poor. <clears throat> 18 studies has recorded uh, food intake by using 24 hours recalls or food records, and half of these studies showed a good uh, compliance with the low carb diets prescribed. In seven of the remaining nine trials that <coughs> observed low compliance, participants were receiving very low carbohydrate diets with 5 to 22 percentage of energy from carbohydrates. So in summary, our systematic review and meta-analysis shows that there are modestly lower levels of HbA1c and triglycerides 
apparent when comparing diets with low carbohydrate content with those providing higher carbohydrate content. Changes in body weight, blood cholesterol, fractions, and blood pressure did not differ significantly between groups low. And subgroup analysis suggested that other than the small additional triglyceride lowering effect associated with low carbohydrate diets, differences were only evident in short-term studies with a duration of three to six months. So, are low carbohydrate diets more beneficial than higher carbohydrate diets in adults with type 2 diabetes? I think the answer is no. They may be equally effective for metabolic control. What all recent systematic reviews confirm is that low carbohydrate diets seem to work just as good as high, higher carbohydrate diets in the long term regarding the effect of blood glucose, blood pressure and lipids. So in that sense, low carbohydrate diets may be recommended as an option for people with type 2 diabetes. But I will say with certain reservations. Advice regarding the proportion or total energy provided by carbohydrates must also take into account the source and nature of carbohydrate and the effects on, uh, of the other macronutrients. High fiber diets that are rich in legumes, uh, vegetables and fruits, as you can see on the left hand side, have been shown to improve most of the metabolic dis disarrangements in type 2 diabetes. The sugary foods that you see on the right hand side have never been recommended. This review of Mikan Musafarian summarizes dietary factors with probable or, probable or convincing evidence for an etiological, etiological uh, relationship with the cardiovascular or metabolic outcomes. And as you can see, several carbohydrate rich foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grain, and also fiber seem to have a protective role for um, <coughs> cardiometabolic outcomes. A high glycemic load and a high intake of sugar sweetened beverages seem to have a negative effect. But this is not the kind of carbohydrate rich foods we recommend in any case. So rather, rather than recommending a general reduction in carbohydrate, I would specify which kind of foods to reduce and which foods to increase the intake of. Altered intakes of fat and protein resulting from changes in the proportion of energy from carbohydrates may also influence <coughs> glycemic control and the indicators of cardiovascular risk. And there was an appreciable difference in the dietary content within both the low and higher carbohydrate diets that are compared in the systematic reviews. There is limited information on dietary quality, both regarding nature and source of carbohydrate, fat and proteins. But um, many of the low carb diet interventions included in our meta-analysis promoted increased intake of unsaturated fat but not saturated fat. Thus, the findings have no direct bearing to, on several widely promoted low-carb, high-fat diets in which saturated fat is not restricted or may even be encouraged. Since detailed dietary data were not provided in many of the studies included in the meta-analysis, it is not possible to distinguish among the effect of carbohydrate quantity and carbohydrate quality uh, and other macronutrients. Changes in medication over time may also have blurred the effects <coughs> of different um, differences in diet composition. The limited information given in the included studies suggests that particularly in the very low carbohydrate groups, there was a greater reduction in the use of diabetic medication, mainly in insulin. <clears throat> that may have masked a more positive impact of uh, glycemic control than what we have shown. On the other hand, only four studies showed a significant difference in changes in diabetes medication between the dyes. And some of these studies repeated their analysis adjusting for the difference in uh, medication and found that it did not alter the conclusions. 
Another concern I have by recommending low carbohydrate diets is the importance of weight changes. Weight reduction was a goal in the majority of the studies, and improvements seen with low carbohydrate diets were observed mainly when weight loss was achieved. A systematic review and meta analysis uh, by Sainsbury. Um, uh, that was published in 2018, showed <clears throat> that the short-term glycemic improvements of the low-carbohydrate diets appeared to be due to weight loss, with no <coughs> significant difference in HbA1c change between diets when restricted to studies with equal weight loss. This shows, I think, that the most important uh, dietary intervention in this patient group probably is energy restriction to obtain weight loss. And the question remains, will the patient benefit from carbohydrate re reduction if weight loss is not achieved? As several recent metabolic <coughs> intervention studies have shown, it is uh, in the situation of weight gain and energy surplus that the quality of both carbohydrate and fat becomes important for the metabolic regulation. The limitation of systematic reviews stems from the quality of the included trials and the extent to which participants adhere to the prescribed diet, which we know diminishes over time in studies of individuals living in the community. And all recent systematic reviews show that only, short -term, uh, only a short-term better effect on HbA1c and in some cases triglycerides and HCL. It is uncertain whether the failure to demonstrate long-term benefits results from failure to comply with advice to reduce carbohydrate intake or is a consequence of adaptation to an altered dietary pattern. Nevertheless, it is clear that the long-term outcome data that are relevant to the practical application of these findings. Some of the other systematic reviews that has been performed lately uh, reported that the effect of glycemic control was related to the extent of carbohydrate restriction. But our post hoc subgroup analysis did not show any difference in HbA1c between very low carbohydrate diets and moderately uh, low carb diets. On the contrary, our subgroup analysis showed that the very low carbohydrate diets had a less favorable effect on LDL cholesterol compared with the high uh, carbohydrate diets, high, high carbohydrate diets. While this difference was not shown in studies using moderately lowered uh, carbohydrate diets. We also observed that the trials with high risk of bias uh, are associated with more favorable results for the low carbohydrates in many analyses. <coughs> Okay, my interpretation of the recent uh, systematic reviews, including our own, on the subject of carbohydrate content, is that it, is, it underlines the concept of personal preference playing a key role in the prescription of dietary advice. We have to take into uh, account the whole diet and be more concerned with the quality of the carbohydrate, fat and protein in the diet people prefer to eat. If that is a low carbohydrate diet, make sure that the carbohydrates they do eat are those providing fiber and are nutrient dense, and that the carbohydrates uh, are substituted with unsaturated fat and perhaps more vegetable sources of protein. So to conclude, the proportion of daily energy provided by carbohydrate intake is not an important determinant of response to dietary management especially when considering longer-term trials. Further long-term term dietary intervention studies taking into account both the amount and source of carbohydrate would be helpful in refining nutritional recommendations <coughs> for individuals with diabetes. And in the meantime, practice nutrition recommendations require <coughs> translation into dietary patterns in order for them to be implemented. On the basis of currently available systematic reviews and meta-analysis, there is an appreciable body of evidence to suggest that the traditional Mediterranean type diet is particularly appropriate for people with type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> Other dietary approaches, including a healthy Nordic diet and a vegetarian diet, may also be beneficial 
for people with diabetes. But none of these dietary patterns is particularly low or high in carbohydrates. And based on what we know today, I would say that energy balance uh, or energy reduction and dietary quality is more important than macronutrient composition of the diet for people with type 2 diabetes. And with that, I'll leave you with a picture of my, uh, myself and my co-writers uh, on this um, um, paper. Thank you.